Hey there, dudes and dudettes. Time to wax up your boards and go catch the big wave over at the LPN Beach, Beach Blanket, Blanket. Blanket. Bingo. 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 One night only at the Balboa Theater in San Diego, October 20th. Come and check out all of the cool cats and the crazy dogs at LPN. Every show in the entire network, each one pulsating and grinding in front of you for your entertainment pleasure. We're all going to catch the big kahuna. I know I'm talking about that big greasy guy. I'm talking about a wave. Ew, it's seaweed. It's seaweed. Just so you know, it's going to be inside of a theater. So any physical wetness you experience is your own personal body heat or the sweat of one of the performers. For live stream tickets, go to veeps.com slash L-P-O-T-L to watch from the comfort of your own home. Again, that's V-E-E-P-S dot com slash L-P-O-T-L. <laughs> Come and check it out. I'm certain if there's a podcast flavor you need on your tongue, we got the spoon for it. Beach blanket bingo, baby. Come on, girls, let's dance. There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Side stories. Yeah, your That's when the cannibalism started. Side, Side stories. stories. <laughs> yes. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, chameleon. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. Lala, what is your name? Lala, it's like my cum. It's golden cum. It's golden cum. Are we recording? Great. <laughs> good, good, good. I hope it goes out to boy George. He puts the boy in a boy's George's name. Um, guys, I first of all want to say, number one, you guys have been, you know, been on this adventure with us for the last 12 years. Uh, side stories have been going, what, how long? For five, six years? I don't know. Um, I only started paying attention to it like a month and a half ago. You had to. Uh, but <laughs> the divisiveness of Holden <laughs> over all of these years still holds. I have never received so many emails. It's the schizophrenic nature of people literally <laughs> first of being like, Holden's incredible. I finally, who did you tell? You know what I mean? Like, you know, obviously yeah. misspelled. Yeah. You can smell the fucking dirt breath coming off of it. So good to hear you guys together. Like, I missed him so much. He was the best part of everything this network has ever done. Yeah. Nobody in the world is funnier than Holden McNeely. But then the other side <laughs> of the hate that comes with it is just so precious. I'm just glad we can still do it. Yeah, I'm really happy we could do it too. I mean, and it would just ran the gamut like, why do you even keep him around? Like, you're I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. You know, he is just that. You just wind him up. We've just said it time and time again that like, if he wasn't funny, someone would have murdered him 20 years ago. And he's barely funny. <laughs> you know, but it's nice. I'm finally getting, I'm getting into the the spooky season. As are we all. I'm fine. It feels good. Oh, yeah. I, 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 we watched The Exorcist. I forgot how good that movie is. Also, I forgot even talking about it. It's like, we need to do a run up on the murderer on The Exorcist set. Yeah. There's like a whole thing. I forgot like yeah, how I've fucked been, up that scene is. I've been pushing for this for years. We got to yeah. do something. Do you remember his name? I don't remember his name, but there was a guy in one of the uh, scenes in which Reagan is getting a spinal tap. Which is still... Arguably one of the most horrifying scenes in that film. It's absolutely horrible. Paul Battison. Paul Battison, but or yeah. Paul Bateson. Yeah, he's the he was the orderly. Yeah. And you kind of see he has like two lines in it. And uh, God knows why he started killing. Yeah, I think he had like three or four. I think he was one of those guys that was suspected of being a serial killer, but yes. they never actually proved Addison that he was. Addison Barrel. One of those things where he like, it was like, we know he did it, but we can't prove that he did it. Yes, it seems like it's something, there's a lot of talk about, you know, kink gone wrong, but as we were seeing with Andrew Cunanan, mm -hmm. they often run with that when they don't need to. So, yes. but we'll do a big rundown on this. Uh, welcome to Side Source. Welcome to Side Source. My name is Marcus Parks, and with me is Henry Zabrowski. I, I didn't know if you wanted uh, to say your own name or not. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. Yeah, we're still, yeah, we're kind of getting to the... Help. Help. 
Hello. I'm helping. I'm Marcus Barks. You're Henry Zabrowski. Yeah, I'm Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, God, no. Let's um, get into some updates. Dude, I will I will say also, it's important to check out Pumpkinhead during this time of year. Of course. Pumpkinhead. And I still have my pitch for Pumpkinhead 3 that no one will hear that I think is really cool. What we do is you have like a guy, like a cop, like who's racist cop, mm-hmm. kill somebody on like, a, like you know, like w- warrantlessly. He does thing like really like something fucked up, right? Yeah. And then the family goes and gets Pumpkinhead. And then it's Pumpkinhead versus the fucking police. <laughs> that would be fucking sweet. And they're all trying to get in there. And then you have like good cops trying to stop Pumpkinhead. Yeah. You know, and the rest of them being like, but also at the same time being like, and then, and then there's a, my favorite characters in all horror where people are sitting inside being like, Bessie, sit down. They ain't all business now. That ain't our business. <laughs> He's mocked. Mark David is mocked. All right, we cannot get involved. It's a legend of Pumpkinhead, and it's real. Like, I love that shit. <laughs> and then little tiny Lance Henriksen. Uh-uh. He was never a boy. No. I don't know how they they, they cast a boy as Lance Henriksen. Henriksen. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, the, the boyhood version of Lance Henriksen still had the scars and yeah. still been like, they called him all. Nobody can call him all. But I'm going to send him back to hell where he belongs. And you're like, you know, like, you're nine. Yeah, you're nine. Is Danny Glover still alive? He better be. Because if not, I'm walking away from the microphone. (laughs) I can't do it today. I'd like him to be in in Pumpkinhead 3. I'd like him to be one of the good cops. Yeah, he's 77. Year's fun, man. So he can still get in there. Yeah, he can still be there. He could still be. He could be chief of police. Finally. Yes. That would be awesome. Finally. Yeah, I'm getting too old for this pumpkin shit. (laughs) Which is a great, again, great line. Speaking of pumpkins, I have bought a pumpkin this year. Oh, good. But I have not carved it yet. What I did do, though, because, you know, I've been working in my garden. Yeah, sure. No, I know. Working. No, I've been having a lot of fun in my garden. So what I did, I had a lot of extra dirt left over after I planted all my plants. And so what I did is I made a -a dirt-a-lantern in my my garden. That's fucking weird. (laughs) So it's no. just a big lump of dirt. It's a big. It is a, a pile. Mound? It is a mound of dirt, and I got a couple of sticks that I dug out of the ground because cool. there were some weird roots down there. And I don't know what they're from. You're killing anyway. your trees. <laughs> now all I got is palm trees out there. But I, what I did is I used those two sticks and made horns. I used rocks for eyes and a little nose. I found a little triangle rock for a nose and put that in. And then I used palm tree seeds as the mouth, as the big smile. This could be the house where, like, you know, the parents. Are was like usher the kids past being like no no don't they don't know what halloween is whatever they think halloween is is not good no it looks very pagan i yeah. mean that's great honestly i we all i'm i mean i think i'm just jealous because sure. i really am trying to find a way because we finally got our 12 foot skeleton sure you know but i want us to be the scary house on the block i would love for people to whisper as they go past being like that's where the that fat guy lived <laughs> i mean like whoa cool no and how only- did he he did some magic spell to get that hot ass white <laughs> no the only person who's seen my dirt lantern is my mailman whose name is fred and we're friends you bringing him in the house <laughs> no because he's always i'm always working on my garden so he comes in comes out hey fred hey yep. marcus so yeah that's really sweet it's really nice See, look at you you're becoming fucking like a suburbanite dude i got a house so i'm doing my shit that's i'm doing the whole nice. thing but yeah i'll take a picture of the dirt lantern and we'll send it out on the newsletter yeah it would be great people would love it uh all right update says you were trying to get into one of the most important debates in the history of this show, obviously, we've had a lot of controversies here. We had the Dandelions Daffodils, like, debacle, mm. literally, like, set the whole fucking subgroup. We're all into a, into a fiery rage, yeah. you know, and Otter's Papers. This was a question that came up last week that I I really appreciate the true diversity of the answers. So yeah. We basically asked the question, dick taste. Yeah. If you're sucking a bunch of different dicks, how different does each dick taste as in, you know, when you have no, kind of lingy, when you do, when you're eating pussy, mm-hmm. like you obviously they're very, each one is very distinct and it's about the, the, the owner. Very much so. Yeah. You know? It's about the owner. It's about, you know, diet. It's, it, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Absolutely. But now, there's also, you know, just a natural scent. And also there's kind of a vague baseline, mm-hmm. but most it, of the time it's all, it's all jazz. And I've never got the people that say that, you know, the, the whole fish thing, the whole fishy thing. Never in my life have I run across a fishy. Yeah, only you're like, Uncle Greg says shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, only the dirtiest man at the 7-Eleven talks. Like, she's got a tuna gas. You know what I mean? Like, most of the time, people are pretty fair to vaginas because no. we're created by them. Yeah, it's always the guy who says, ain't nothing better in the world. 
shit, maybe pussy. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's sir, like ah. sir, I just need you to send this next day. <laughs> um, but uh, I truly can't believe how the numbers break down. I want to thank Joel who went through this. He, he broke down all the stats. It is pretty much down the line. Hygiene aside, dick tastes the same. We got 46 answers. Because of hygiene, all dicks taste different. 44. Interesting. So as many people who say that dicks taste different are people who say all dicks taste the same. And I've seen it across the board. People saying it just tastes like sweat, mm -hmm. right? It just tastes like one person put it like it was like licking a forearm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is being like, well, I don't know what those hands are doing. Um, but then a lot of other people just said like, no, obviously each dick is d different. Each penis has a different idea. I think really what it comes down to is cum yeah. and the fact that the cum is distinctly very different. Cum is always different. That does, yes. that, that always has a different flavor. The interesting response that uh, I got, the one that really makes me wonder is that there were six people, six, who all said that clean dick tastes like avocados. Hey, I, I, I just don't know if they're even uh, eating avocados wrong. <laughs> Like, I don't know if the problem is that it's because they don't have access to good avocados mm -hmm. or if it's just like maybe that's a type of synesthesia yeah. that we just don't understand. Kisses taste like watermelon. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe to them, fucking avocado tastes like dick, <laughs> which is uh, now. Ah, fuck. But we also got. I love avocado. <laughs> I crave avocado. But we also got a, a text from one of our longtime friends, uh, yeah. John Flynn, yeah. who is very, very vocal that all dicks taste different. You know, because I still think all dicks taste different. And mostly I, it, it's got to do with foreskin and how you take care of it. And I think that's a big fucking deal. Because also one person specifically said uncircumcised dick tastes like pancakes. <laughs> Which is, again, I don't know what restaurant you're at. It must be in Glasgow. And there's also one person who said, and this I can absolutely believe, dick and balls smell like pencil shavings. That's, again, that's something else. <laughs> that's something else. You're but dating I, an English teacher. But I believe that, though. That makes a lot of sense to me. Well, I've also, you know, they say that, like, white people smell like dog, smell uh, like wet dog. Uh, I believe that the, the whole thing that white people smell like hot dogs, I know exactly what they're talking about because I have smelled white people who smell exactly like hot dogs. Oh, yeah, my cousins. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have hot dog people my family yeah. so that's honestly it's really nice uh thank I've you for the feedback multiple women who for some reason tasted like peas what yeah it was like how do you even know that they tasted like peas because i was kissing them and they tasted uh, i know what peas taste like how i mean like the vegetable no, peas yeah i know what you're saying but yeah. i've never had a so distinctive a pea it was dish yeah that i would say like that's peas. Now that's peas. <laughs> like I don't understand. No, but I know peas, and it was it's a very odd thing. Yeah, three times I've kissed girls, and they they tasted like peas. You just get odder and odder. <laughs> I don't know. You eating the peas? I, I I don't know if I could pick a pea taste out of a lineup. No, I don't like peas. Peas, is, but you know me. But you I'm, like British shit. You know, but, but I like. And it's all peas. Not all peas. I like peas in my pies. If you put peas in your pie, like, then why? Then you don't. Then you do like peas. Well, I like peas in my pie. I don't like peas on their own. This is, again, this is just deeper into this. Thing. It makes It's the way he, it's his qualifications. It's the stuff that goes inside of his head where he's just like, in this state, these peas are fine. Peas loose, garbage. <laughs> Meanwhile, you just had the peas and you're actually appreciating the element that the peas give to the melange inside of the pie. Yeah. And so you do like peas. You just don't <laughs> like I'm, I, I ooh, like man. peas. My flutes? I like peas as an ingredient. I'm in drinking a, a red eye right now. In I a should larger melange. It. Yeah, you, I know. That's good. That's good. We, we already missed the flutes. It's already passed. Yeah. It's already you, passed. You, you sit there and eat spoonfuls of cumin? No. Yeah, but I'm trying to have a not as fragrant existence. <laughs> you know? All right. So let me get one more update. We have another update here. Uh, this is. Again, this is fucking awesome. The reason why I want to read this up top, because, you know, again, we're trying to keep it a little bit spooky at the very, very top. This is why we talk about dicks and peas. You always say it and you always fail. I've always <laughs> fuck it up. I've 13 always fuck it years up. you've never been able to spook anyone. You know what it is? <laughs> is that it's so hard to be, who do we know truly probably the personally the most spooky person I know? David Dasmalki. Yeah, right? easily. easily. He is easily. The, the, he is truly a very spooky man, just in general. But he's lovely. Lovely. Gracious that, was, man. that was the adjective I was going to use as well. Lovely yeah. man, but, but spooky as hell. But he is definitely spooky. Yeah. You know, and so I, I think it requires, I think spooky and sexy are kind of close. 
Hmm. And you kind of have to have, it's like a sincerity mixed within a, because it's a mystery. Is this sort of like how comedy and horror are very close? Well, I'd say comedy and horror are close because they both give involuntary physical reactions, mm -hmm. right? But like spooky and Spooky and sexy. I think it's about having a thing. You're just thinking. You're talking. I think you're thinking about vampires. David Dust Monkey, <laughs> right? But uh, so we uh, try to keep it spooky. Is to tell this little story that we got sent because the reason why, honestly, is that because it kind of sends a little bit of a shiver on my own spine because we went on this same exact tour in Edinburgh mm -hmm. and heard this same exact story from a tour guide. So it is really interesting to see it be confirmed because you know you never know. I've taken countless ghost tours and they're all like they say they got patter they have bits you never really know yeah. what is like real or what's not real like what is what's what are you are you selling me something you know yeah. yeah we went on a horrible ghost tour in edinburgh once where just well she just didn't know what she, she She's was like I know, oh, i'm normally here for the highlander tour and we're like well <laughs> go back to it you go fuck it back to it because we know what's going on or outlander it was their erotic highlander the one that makes my mother wet yeah outlander and where this woman's trying to tell a fucking story about birkenhair and there we are with our friend neil who is an expert on birkenhair and we're also just did the episode we did a series on birkenhair <laughs> and we're correcting the woman they she loved us loved us whispering at the back all right here we go here's a story about mr boots of the edinburgh vaults this tour was fantastic yes this is a great tour during my trip to Scotland with my wife this May. Why are you doing a Scottish accent? He's I'm taking just, a trip. I, he's I taking am. A, he took a trip to Scotland. But you never know. So what You don't know what his nationality is. Well, if he's taking a trip to Scotland, he's not probably not Scottish. You never know. All right? <laughs> he might be a self-hating Scot. All right? We decided to take a haunted tour through the Edinburgh vaults. Our tour guide was the only person with a flashlight, which is, again, that is that is how they do it. It's fucking, it's freaky. It's, it's a great very freaky. Tour. No, great like tour. right at the beginning, I'm claustrophobic and I put my hand on Henry and I whispered, I think I'm going to die down here. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> me too, fuck yeah. Um, and she asked the group to not use flash photography or to have their phones out. So she would be the only person with a light source. And it's dark in the vaults. And having no lights gives you a good idea of how horrible it would have been to live there. A little bit of history, apparently during a time period when they were trying to make poor people illegal during the time when Edinburgh was just like a quarter of a mile around. They, they, they joke about the Scots were the first one to build skyscrapers because they would live on these giant wooden platforms that would often fall, set on fire. So one thing they decided to do is they had these giant bridges that go through the city or they go uh, connect to the city. And they decided to wall it off and put people that are, were poor underneath the ground. Yeah. And these giant, these vaults that were like six and a half feet by like seven feet tall. Like, I mean it like truly claustrophobic. And they would jam 150 people at a time into these chambers where they would essentially, you know, they'd be burning fires that were made by animal fats and shitting in buckets. And it was uh, an absolute nightmare to behold. And just people died and died and died and died. Very freaky place. Right. So we were herded to the back of a very dark second vault. And the guy told us about Mr. Boots or the Watcher, which is, the, we, I mean, we got the same story. It's a fairly well-known malevolent spirit that dwells within, known for making people pass out. Our tour guide told us that she wasn't a fan of this particular spirit, but Mr. Boots was a fan of hers and commonly showed up for her tours. We probably had the same tour guide. Yeah. As she was going through her stories of his appearances and misconducts during her tours, I was looking around trying to see whatever my eyes could in the dark. I noticed a small white light towards the entrance of the vault. It was about six feet off the ground, but I couldn't make out the source. I thought maybe they had some emergency lights somewhere in that area, and I, it was just originating from that. And when I asked our guide as we entered into the next room, she confirmed that there was nothing technological to cause that light and noted I might have seen something paranormal. Hmm. The next room was where the entity apparently dwelled. The guide separated all the couples so everyone was standing alone before she turned off her flashlight, leaving us all completely in the dark. This is when my wife started to freak out, like you, mm -hmm. started to leave the tour. I stayed behind, but I didn't have any sense of paranormal goings on. You know, the, the, the guide finished up her stories of the entity before hey, leading the rest of us back up to the surface of Edinburgh. I asked her if Mr. Boots had been with us tonight, and she confirmed his presence hiding her distress over it. We didn't pry too much, just tipped and we made our way back to the hotel. Now for the weirdness. And this is the part I haven't shared with my wife. 
Um, and so he's saying right here, so if you end up reading this on the show, it'll probably be the first time she's hearing. Great. After a few hours of sleep. I love, I love blowing up marriage secrets. Fucking get to the center of a man. <laughs> Can it hold? <laughs> After a few hours of sleep, I woke up, bleary and strangely enough, feeling a sense of oppression. I remember looking to the other side of the bed and seeing a shadow figure standing over us. And the moment I was freaked out, but being well accustomed to experiencing sleep paralysis, I told myself it was just a bit of that. So I did what I always do, told my brain to stop fucking with me, and I managed to turn over and fall back asleep. I haven't mentioned it to my wife because she was already feeling sick with a head cold and ghosts freak her out. I haven't experienced anything else like that since then. So at least I guess it didn't follow us home. You know, it's funny is that I've been told by a lot of people who are sensitives. They're like, man, there's so many ghosts following you around. I mean, you got your family is part of the American blood trust, <laughs> right? Your family was a part of a lot of like really intense you have frontier crimin- people. Yeah. yeah, frontier people. There was some criminality. There was other things like inside of your family. So I could there's definitely a, see that. Yeah, there's a gun in the family that's been passed down that has like notches on the, You're a on the hill. You're for how many people the guns killed? Three, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. there's plenty of blood in my family. But no, they say it's not people that they say that it's people that I pick up along the way. Hmm. That, that they say that if a ghost or Fans? a spirit. <laughs> Honestly, get them to subscribe. Uh, I will. But these are, but these are they say that they're just spirits that, you know, follow me around for a while uh, and then will go away. And then until they find someone else to follow or something else to follow. I got nothing. I mean, I, I don't feel anything. I don't feel any sort of spirit following me. And I, I prefer, I like being alone. This is great. I, this is great. <laughs> and I really love being right next to you uh, because I've done a whole cleanse. I'm in a full magical renaissance yeah, on my own. Which is I great. did a full, I've had some spooky things happening in my own house recently that I just don't like, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I did a thing. I did a thing. And I mean it. I haven't felt like that in a long time yeah, where spooky. pots and pans fell off my, literally no reason to just fucking slid off my kitchen counter. Dogs going nuts. While things you're doing closed, this stuff. Yes. Things go, oh, things opening and closing. Literally felt a wind rip through my house like watch like papers fly off a thing it was it's been a lot yeah. so i i'm ready for it i'm here for it i'm ready to be spooked as all hell halloween <laughs> so come on let's see some goddamn ghosts i'm cool with being passive about it you know if the spirits are there if they're following me around fucking take sweet, a bro. look <laughs> hey now hi yeah, yeah. when you're laying it to carolina you go yeah. like yeah want you applaud <laughs> Do you ever do that? Do you ever thank the ghosts that are watching you while you're plowing your wife? Why would I thank them? Because they're there. <laughs> thank Honestly, you. I always love a fan. Good. Thank you for appreciating. Thank you for appreciating. Yeah. Thank you like and subscribe. Absolutely. And just, <laughs> wham, 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 like and subscribe. No, no, no. I, I'm there for that. I'm glad they're there for that. It's just the alone moments, certain alone moments that I, I actually do think sometimes when I'm having my Times? solo. Masturbating. <laughs> you talking about when you're jerking off? Yeah, I'm talking about when I'm jerking off and you know, do you ever make love to yourself? No, nah, like, you nah, really... I treat myself like a dirty whore. <laughs> I'm literally just like, hey, your money's on the dresser. No, I don't even, it's very mechanical when I jerk off. No, I like, sometimes I like to make it nice, you know, not yeah. necessarily like set the mood. Yeah, kind of set the mood a little bit. You make it nice because you're with yourself and you know, you're wanting to have a little bit of self love. A little bit of self love. You treating wow. yourself with with the sort of you treating yourself how you want to be treated. This is incredible. You're gardening. You're doing forty five minute masturbating sections. <laughs> like you're really turning into Anne Hayes. Oh. <laughs> like this is incredible. Like this is I love this. Oh, I've been doing that. I've been treating myself for with, you, uh, for a long for forever. forever. Maybe yeah. I should. I just don't really. You, you should try it. I'm not that into me. Yeah. You know, like just in terms of being like. Yeah, you know, the good part of me is I get access to Natalie. Well, it just, well, of course, you still have your wife. You still make love. You yeah, still have your Yeah, of course. That's where I put the time in. But then the sub, but that's the thing. You can do both, brother. You know, I guess what you it can is. Do both. I do both. It's just so, just Nobody like, suffers. you know what it is? Is that after you make sweet, beautiful love to your wife, you go, you, you go right back to having a nice, fun life and you can talk about stuff where it's like, when I'm alone and I'm jerking off, those moments after I fucking ejaculate are just like, what have I come and that's why you, and I? that's why you need to take it a little more pleasantly yes <laughs> it's like as i come yeah. oh oh like yeah. full like full throat do you full make full cum noise do i make full cum noise uh sometimes actually yeah 
If I'm yeah, no. especially now I that I like, live in, I, now that I live in a house, like all bets are off when it comes to noises. It's fantastic. Sure, and honestly, obviously, I've done this bit before, but when I've seen my eyes in the reflection of the computer, I just look like Henry, portrait of a serial killer. <laughs> like it's just the Stanley Kubrick <laughs> looking down the pipe, just like looking at myself. Like, yeah. What have I done here? No, and you put on something nice like Dorsal Club, you know, where you know people are having fun. Something French. Hey, you put on something French. Oh, I'm down. I mean, you know, maybe I'll try it this weekend. Try it this weekend if you're, and that's the thing, because this is an out of town thing. This is oh yeah, what, this I'm gonna be in a hotel by myself. Yeah, well, in a hotel you can't really do it. In a hotel, it's hard to do because you know that's when uh, that's, that's when, when all bets are off. Yeah, then, that's when my <laughs> penis is trying to get away from me during the fucking when I'm in a hotel. No, no, you got to do it when you when your wife's out of town or when she's like having like girl time. You know what is hard is that then there's the dogs. Well, you just leave that. You don't. You jerk off in front of your dog. No, I can't. It's hard to, I hate it. I just look and you see four pairs of. <laughs> little eyes just so I'm like what you doing daddy no 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 I'd go go George daddy why'd you do it daddy that's a pumpkin head <laughs> daddy Live from your grave um I right, talk about someone who's trying to avert the, from the gaze of others yes there's one famous guy but guess what man it just shows you sometimes you don't know you don't know where these eyes are coming from because they come from fucking everywhere and people are looking for this guy and I think we finally fucking got him you think we with this one you think we got him you Big think foot. you think we got Bigfoot? Bigfoot is spotted. Broad daylight. This one's a good one. All right, let's take a look at this. We got some camera footage of this. I want to go through. We'll show it on the, obviously, we'll show it on clips or whatever. Um, so this is a couple that was on a uh, vacation in Colorado, right? It was, quote, unquote, professed eyewitnesses, according to New York Post, Shannon and Stetson Parker. Stetson is such a Colorado name. It really is. You know, they just don't, all these guys are too hot. They're all too hot. Well, they're always bodyboarded. Well, well, again, if they're in Colorado for their 10th anniversary, aren't they from somewhere else? Whatever. It's more of a month. They might be from Montana. You're right. You might be right. You might be right. It's also Dakota's name. It's a hat. (laughs) Stetson is is a hat. It is. I know. (laughs) It's Steve. You're very expensive. (laughs) Um, So now they said they were enjoying a trip for their 10th wedding anniversary. And they said here, this according to the New York Post, which I don't like this derogatory term. They observe the legendary Lummox. Well, it's the New York Post. They don't take any of this seriously at all. Whatever. There's a whole industry around this, right? <laughs> and so uh, they, they, it, was, it was the narrow, they, it was a sightseeing tour on the narrow gauge rail line between Durango and Silverton in the Centennial States far southwest. So you basically, man, you went on your anniversary and you went on a train tour? You never been on these train rides? They're well, fantastic. I mean, we used to go to New Mexico all the time when I was a kid. Is it fun? It, it was so much fun. Because I'm down. Honestly, I did not know. I was just mostly just being like, you just went to go look at a train? No, you ride on the train and you get to, oh. and they give you like kind of a tour. They tell you like what happened where and you know, you get to go see the mountains. You get to see all kinds of really cool shit. I love it. You know what? Take it back. I take it back. It actually sounds really nice. Yeah. And I'll do it. I'll There's coal it. everywhere. Well, now it's getting into there. Like, what is this? Yeah. What is this? We're just looking at fuel. <laughs> well, as a kid, and I got to play with the coal, and I was all blackened by the coal. And I put get all different over my wants, face. different expectations of a vacation. <laughs> you know? So take a look at this footage. Now, these guys shot this. Now, look at this. All right. Now, this is, he's in full comic book. What in the living fuck is this? I now, mean, what you're seeing here is, I believe that's him shitting. You think so? Well, so you see here a very large creature, very similar to the Patterson Gimlet footage. Again, very tall. No way is it a guy in a suit. No. Well, the thing is, okay. Musculature. <laughs> Look at him sit down like he's people. But he That's also, me on my toto. But when he sits down, it looks like he sort of pulls his back. Like he's, he, he looks like he's adjusting clothing uh, as his he fur, sits down. Yeah, he's adjusting his fur around his knees. Well, no, he, I actually don't know. I don't know if that's true. That's really, that's clear as fuck, though. It's very that's clear. clear, which also makes it's it. It's not clear as fuck. Are you kidding? It's extremely clear. <laughs> that's it's extremely like, clear. It's extremely clear that there's something moving. Yeah, a man, not definitely in a suit. <laughs> Walking amongst the brush. I do like that it's camouflage. Uh-huh. Right? It, it's definitely the same color as his environment. He's lumbering. Sandy, he's a sandy brown. Yeah, and I'd say he is lumbering. He's very much lumbering. That's Bigfoot. He's walking amongst the brush. And his arms do look like abnormally long. Like, wh- again, look at this. It is very, the arms are long. The arms are extremely long. The legs are very long. Big feet attached to legs. You can't see his feet. I see the end of his foot. You see right there. <laughs> it's kind of, it goes up at the top, right? The thing like, it might, 
Ah, kind of like slacks, he, but he reach, but he reaches behind him too. Is it to check like, it for his wallet? I know that's what I was about to say. You, you don't think do Bigfoot this? doesn't need to fucking American Express? <laughs> like you don't think he doesn't need his membership cards or his punch clubs for when he goes down to the coffee shop? Look at that. I I love this sit. That's a difficult sit for a lumbering lummox. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, he he's sitting down and he looks like he's resting his elbows on his knees. I think he's taking a shit. Uh, but he's. It looks like his butt's fully on the ground, and let, it doesn't look like he's squatting. It looks like he's sitting because he can pitch forward. I kind of <laughs> see a pitch forward where he could be shitting. I I don't know. I ha. Uh, this could be it. The only thing I'm mad about then is that you didn't go and get this fucking scat. But they're on a train. There's no way that they can now. Know I'm back to anti train tour because I would have been like, <laughs> stop the train. You wouldn't have yelled, stop the train, if you saw Bigfoot right next to the train. And that's the other thing too is that you're also like, this is you're presupposing. You are are presupposing many things here. You're I'm assuming a lot of things. I'm here. allowed to. This but, ain't court. So or you, this ain't cryptid court. So you don't think because that's the thing. You are presupposing that Bigfoot squats when he shits, and that Bigfoot doesn't shit while he walks. I definitely think he squats when he shits because he's way more close to a prime than he would be anything else. Hmm. I believe he definitely squats when he shits. Do you know I that think that if he was in full run and he had to shit, and he, he would. <laughs> right, because they do, do they say that in marathons, right? You're supposed to just go. Yeah. Right, you're supposed to just go. And also, they do say that in a flight or fight response, quite often, animals do defecate. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and when Humans they move. Do. And birds do. Birds yeah. shit. That's a part of the reason why birds shit on you when you when they fly off is that they have engaged the use of their wing muscles Side stories, lpot gmail.com. I'm saying this way too confidently. Yeah. But I'm pretty certain <laughs> that birds, that's why, is because they start to fly and then the natural use of the top muscles makes them disengage their bowel muscles, which is why they shit. I th always thought that animals shat in, in a flight response to like distract no, the I predator. Think it's just natural. I think it's because you're trying to literally lose whatever weight you got and that you're just. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. God, here we go. Do birds sometimes intentionally poop on people? Yes, the defense mechanism. This is Quora. <laughs> this is Quora. This ain't real. They can't, no, no, no. We can't because Quora is not real. Some birds also regurgitate semi-digested food, which is pretty nasty. Quora is just full of never listen to Quora. Never listen to Quora. Never do it. It's not real. It's not real. Because then also, so as soon as you look up one, it's it's all the rest of it's being like, how do I tell my son to come back? <laughs> you know, like each story in Quora is worse and worse and worse. Being like, does my dog have AIDS? <laughs> can I give my dog AIDS? <laughs> Very scary. You can, because guess what? You can. Uh, Intravenous drug use. <laughs> when you are, because you know how many times Winnie really struggles with tying off her little arm when she gets her hit, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. again, she's just yeah, she's looking to relax, right? She's just just right. saying, being like, "Need some fucker cut the edge off, man." She's just such a fucking pussy about doing it herself. So yeah, I got to do. I got to drop the. You got to drop the linen, yeah. yeah. But that's after you've already dropped. Do you drop it in first, or do you do the dog? I first? don't get high on my own supply. It's for the dog. It's I'm fucking dog. clean okay. and sober. Good from heroin. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get into one more story. Like we got, we, I mean, we got a lot of stories here, but there's a couple of these here that are pretty fucking good. Oh God, which one do we do? I mean, we've got either the cyclist or the judge. Which one do you want to go for? Let's do with the judge. Start, all right. you take the judge. All right, the judge. So an Oklahoma judge could be booted from the bench. This is from the Daily Beast, by the way. After an investigation found she texted her way through a trial over the beating death of a two-year-old boy with court records revealing she laughed about a prosecutor's baby hands, wondered whether a juror was wearing a wig and drooled over a quote-unquote pretty police officer testifying on the stand, and she was texting with the bailiff. It's very, you know, not to be anything, she's got the face, she's got Facebook face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she's got yeah. the type of person that's like been an issue, but mm -hmm. now somehow she became a Lincoln County District Judge. Yeah. Her name is Tracy Soderstrom. Um, and In Lincoln like, County, by the way, that's Billy the Kid. This is Billy the Kid territory. I mean, you could tell, like, you could see footage. So last month, there was a little bit of controversy because the video of her texting, after first telling the entire court that they need to put all of their phones away so they can fully pay attention to the evidence, there is footage of her very not surreptitiously. It reminds me when I thought I was getting away with not working at my office job. Yeah. Where it was like, uh, they know you're not doing anything. Yeah. You know, like, you're, you're going to be clicking over to, no, yeah, I'm looking at the expense report. <laughs> <laughs> and like definitely been looking at Reddit all day, right? But she's got her phone is just like underneath her desk, mm -hmm. right? Which is extremely, extremely fucking uh, sneaky. Uh, and there's an overhead camera. 
that's just showing her do it. Where yeah. she's just click, 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 click. She's just typing along to the bailiff who was also answering her back in a mean girl fashion. Yo, very much so. It's, During a very sad trial. Yes, it's about a man who beat a two-year-old to death. And this woman is texting the bailiff about how like, oh, this guy's definitely innocent. On the uh, district attorney, Adam Painter, Soderstrom observed that he was, quote unquote, sweating through his coat and asked, why does he have baby hands? They're so weird looking, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. Um, 500 texts oh, between yes. these two people. They apparently, she then, they won't repeat it. The bailiff made a crass and demeaning reference to the genitals of two male prosecutors. Um, and she wrote, ha ha. Um, and then she, oh, this is where it gets really into. And a laughing face emoji. Don't worry. Don't forget about the laughing face uh, emoji. Uh, and also, this is where it really gets into uh, why this is a problem, right? Because then you can ask, well, how is this a crime, as we do here on Side Stories? Um, because she gave an emotional, they, uh, Matt Martzell's girlfriend and Braxton's mother, they, that was the victim, Judith Danker, gave emotional testimony about the abuse that Braxton had suffered. So to Shroom then asked in a text, can I please scream liar, liar, um, which is just it's just hard because this is you're not they're not supposed to make judgments in that way. So obviously, no, they're not. They're supposed to assume that the person is innocent until proven guilty or, or be. And I, I isn't a judge in many ways supposed to be impartial. In many ways, in every way. <laughs> in every way, a judge is supposed to be impartial. Uh, in another message, Soderstrom snarked that prosecutors, quote, just couldn't accept that a mom could kill her kid. So they went after the next person available. And obviously we can't really get into, I, I don't really know all of the details of the case that they were talking about. Really, it's just about that idea yeah. of like you have this very, very important person who is just fucking with the process yeah. in a way that seems to be extremely 2023 that it's just this sort of like everybody's playing because this was her first murder trial yeah uh and it just seems to be this constant playing fast and loose with a bunch of shit that just kind of acting like you know which I, I don't know if it's going to send us in a great direction i mean that's the thing about judges is that it, and this always this always gets me with elections cuz i vote every election i do my civic duty fucking nerd <laughs> <laughs> no now i i am forced to as well yeah i like voting but the thing is about most vote like when you get to like the votes when you get to the ballot there's always the votes for like county judge. Oh yeah, and, and uh, most of the time I just pick by like who's got a cool name. And her name, her last name is Soderstrom. It's a really cool last name. Wow, that's so weird. I wonder if there's an there must be some kind of study somewhere. Yeah, that but, talks about that because I know like so for your pretty face going to hell, David Willis talks about how he just saw my name. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was a stupid name. He said, <laughs> he said, that sounds like a Mad Magazine guy. Yeah. And he picked my tape and it really helped me work. And I wonder if there's a lot of that. I guarantee across it. Across the board. Because that's the thing, man, is that I even decided like last election, I was like, you know what, man? Like, because me and Carolina both take it very seriously. We of take course. our civic duty very seriously. In the last LA elections, Ed sent me a bunch of stuff. Like, I yeah. really read it. But sometimes for these judges, it's hard to really find out. It's impossible to find out what these people are all about. Like, it's impossible to find out, like, their histories. Like, there's just not much out there unless you spend all fucking day trying to figure out what one judge is all about. So usually it's just a fucking, it's like a, uh, it's a crapshoot. That's as not to good. Who gets, who, as to who gets on the bench. And sometimes it's people like this, people who text to the bailiff, look at that hairline. And about a juror. About a juror. Yeah, and yeah. the bailiff writes back, in all caps, OMG, LOL. Man, and then and this maybe... this is just what we have to deal with in this fucking country. Maybe it's just because they're, you know... Do you think they were flirting? Yeah. Do you think this is, like, sexy? I don't know, because they don't ever mention like anything... Being... Like, like, they don't mention any kind... Like, it seems like... I. I think it might have just been like a friendship. Like I think maybe they like had some Bad drinks. Girls Club. They had some drinks after work one day, like after a trial, and they got to, and they found that they really like each other. They're just like it's like you get me, you get me, you get me. Who's Judge Judy's bailiff? Oh yeah, bailiff Bird. Do you think they fucked? <laughs> he's sixty five years old. I guess yeah, he's still around. Yeah. Oh no, he's married. I guess they wouldn't have had sex with each other. He's she seems lovely. His wife seems lovely. Yeah, I, I think they're I think they're friends. I think they I think they probably go to each other's Christmas parties. I would like to hope that they're still friends. I'd like to hope they are too. Uh, did, didn't Judge Judy back? 
Oh, yeah. She doesn't. She's never went away. No. I think she took a year break. She took a year break. And then I think she's one of those people that like realized that her health was probably failing. It's like, if I stop doing this, I'm going to die. Some people are just like that. If yeah. they don't continue to yarble into a television camera, <laughs> they continue. Look at fucking, but it kept Diane Feinstein alive for like fucking. Fuck Diane Feinstein. L- listen to the fucking Dead Kennedy series on No Dogs in Space. If you want to know how badly Diane Feinstein has been fucking shit up she- since the 1970s, how Diane Feinstein. Einstein is almost single-handedly responsible for the state of San Francisco today in a fucking row of dominoes that started way back in like 1979. Go listen to our fucking Dead Kennedy series on No Dogs in Space, which I am particularly proud of. I think I, it's hey, one of our best. One of my favorite attributes of a politician is if they look like a soft pumpkin. <laughs> It is one of my favorites. I want them to look like they're soft to the touch, like they need to wear a helmet, because if not, their head will get fucking dented like a baby from laying on their side for too long. You could just yeah. their hand, your hands it's my right favorite. into their fucking face. I love how small Joe Biden's eyes are getting every day. I love how he's looking more and more like a... Nothing comforts me. But, you know... Democracy is a risk. I, it, it really is. Sometimes it really is a roll of the dice. You got to put it all on red. <laughs> Just let it go. All right, here we go. This is a very side story story. And it's, I don't know why, again, it's not that it's not a crime, but how did we get here? Right. Um, Baxter County, Arkansas. No way. 55-year-old Midway man faces drug and sexual indecency charges after a deputy said he spotted him having sex with a stuffed animal. Uh, in public? Well, you know, he, he was in. Uh, they said that. Because I heard uh, at least one crime in there. So, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. According to court documents, 1245 a.m., when else are you going to stuff an animal? Right? It's October 8th. It's right around the corner. He observed a vehicle at the Midway Store and Lock, which is a storage unit. Um, and he said that he observed that the vehicle was a rockin'. Mm-hmm. But I actually thought that, I think actually in many ways, he has a lot to t- defend himself legally because I do believe it is law. That if if the uh, car is a rock and you don't come, don't come and knock, I'm yeah, yeah. pretty certain that he can do that with the. I believe it's the Elvis Presley law <laughs> that you can do. The, the, I believe it's more custom than it is law, no. but, but it's the yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah it's rule more, of law, yeah more rule of county than anything. <laughs> um, he said that he observed that the vehicle was a rockin', and the deputy looked inside the vehicle. And he observed Morgavin, a man, Theodore T. Morgavin the Third. Theodore T. Morgavin the <laughs> Third? He doesn't, he doesn't look like anybody wanted to make a third. Yeah, oh God, even if you just called him Ted Morgavin. Dude, it's just... Ted Morgavin. <laughs> yeah, I put it in the little tiger's mouth. I told as he quit looking at me, quit seducing me, tiger. I'm trying to put all my meth inside my storage unit. Does Ted um, Morgavin and Teddy Morgavin, are those two different guys? Teddy Morgavin sounds like that it sounds like the thing he was fucking <laughs> um and said when the deputy looked inside the vehicle yeah he was having sex with a stuffed animal uh-huh. now they said then he had an active search waiver from the arkansas department of community corrections obviously they searched the vehicle and they found a purse purse containing two marijuana pipes and one syringe okay uh, and then they found uh, approximately three grams of methamphetamine sure in the purse and that is i feel like the main crime that's the big crime that is how it is a crime however is it his purse? I I don't. I think he probably had a lot of excuses. <laughs> um, this just turned back from a woman. Can you imagine that? You're on methamphetamine. You thought the stuffed animal was a real woman. But yeah. The next thing you know, bubbles popped. Well, I've been fucking a fucking giraffe this whole time. You know what I imagine? Purple hippo. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I, I don't know. That was I guess guy more pushing for the cushion. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just because it gives you a lot to hold on to. Because yeah, it, but yeah, that's because a hippo doesn't mean it's got a big ass on it. Yeah, but it's big, you know, and that's the thing. If but you're depends on the size of the animal versus this. Not all stuffed animals are uh, in what? How you put it? It's in uh, uh, you, in proportion. In proportion to the yeah, animal you, they I, represent. I know you can have a tiny stuffed hippo, but I just imagine a medium sized purple stuffed hippo. We'll find out what it is. I'd love to know. Yeah, I'd love to know. But this is many. We've covered so many of these stories. Outside stories. And I don't really understand the concept of fucking a stuffed animal. In and public. I, in anything. It was like a story of a guy that was uh, with his real estate agent that he was looking at a house to purchase and just on a whim 
started fucking a stuffed animal he found in a room. He started rubbing his dick and balls all over a stuffed animal and coming on the outside of it. And it's just like, what else has gone on today? Is it, is it they spell your name wrong on your Starbucks order? Like, why did you, why are you? Why is today the, well, that's the, but that's the, always the question. It's always the question of why is today the day? Yes. Or why is today the day you got caught? Got slappy. <laughs> you thought you got so confident. Yeah. yeah berserker mode and jerking off. I just don't know what is good about like. I mean, you never, you never had relations with a pillow when you were younger. No, you didn't really. No, no I was never into my hands the, were I enough. I think you're in the minority, you know, because I, I loved, I loved it. Side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. What animals, <laughs> what stuffed animals have you fucking had? I mean, I didn't with? fuck I a stuffed animal. It was just a, a large, like a couch cushion. Was it, didn't Holden used to stick his dick between two mattresses? Yeah, that was him. That's fucking also horrible. Yeah. I, no, uh, mine was regular, dog. Yeah, I mean, mine was also regular, but yeah, there was many was... other objects and many other things no, and many other my, mine was experimentations. Just, no, mine was straight ass regular and then, you know. But you're pretty, but you're, you're just, a, you're pretty vanilla when it comes to sex. I just like. And I'm much more adventurous. I just like it to be there. Yeah, you like it. I like yeah. it to be an option. You're a simple that, man. I, that's it. That an option that is available to me in a fun, nice wholesome romantic way yeah i'm more of a i'm more of a mad scientist you know i i guess as i get older i i don't play with my you know you I don't, don't do anything but you never did it no nah. no nah, see yeah yeah I, i'm always it's all, very polish it's I, utilitarian <laughs> it's very much being like what are we doing here do we have an exit plan yeah well i mean that's the thing but my tastes are definitely decidedly not british as you know per my ancestry you'd be surprised though some of these british get into some freaky ass stuff I, fred and Ma rose west that is true there is, there is definitely an undercurrent and and i've seen some documentaries involving the british in which things get quite strange you they have that taxi cab one yeah they're big on the taxi cuz the taxis are so big there but the thing is they are very big but also like i feel like the men in the videos are so much more like <laughs> <laughs> They'll just look like chimney sweeps. They'll look like big weird being like, I'll fix you gape. I'll fix you fucking gape. You know what I mean? Like that style. And I'm like, Ugh. I, I also happen to know that it is a custom, again, custom. Uh, not a in, law? Not a law. In a British boys boarding school for them to experiment with each other sexually. Side stories, LPOTL. No, at please don't. Com. No, I don't. I don't <laughs> want to hear about the boys everyone experimented with when they were in grade school. Well, I think it was more like an old school thing. I think it was something they did more like in the 50s <laughs> and just, the 60s. I don't know if that's, I feel like that's a broad, that's a broad brush to fucking paint with, friend. I heard tell. I From heard, who? I, I don't remember. From an old weird <laughs> man? You got to be careful where your sources are. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to England to uh, visit family uh, over Christmas, so you know maybe maybe I'll ask whole, them. I'll ask, ask the family. I won't ask the family; they just live there. But I will perhaps one day in a pub when I'm enjoying my steak and ale pie. Let me show you, ask you something here, son. <laughs> let me ask you. Listen, I'm from America, so when you were a boy, did you and the other boys suck each other off? They're gonna love it. Marcus. I might I might have to go to the more posh. I'm sections. from Los Angeles. <laughs> Um, first of all, I just want to ask for not, and it's definitely not for a movie, for a documentary. So no. but when you guys were all little boys, you guys all fucked and sucked each other, right? No, I'd have to ask the posh boys who went to the boarding schools because it's not, a, I mean, I don't God, know about just, the, you know, the, the more working class fellas, uh, because I don't, I'm not really God. sure. I know from study and joy division on no dogs in space, the more working class keep, fellas, good I know that they're really, I know that they're a little bit more open with like, but. Well, Humor. you know what it is, is that I actually recently watched a video of someone. I was like something was on and it was about the New Zealand like football team. There was something that they were doing and it was like them all like chugging on each other's dicks. And then mm -hmm. one guy shitting on another guy's head. Chugging and stuff. on their dicks? Yeah, like they were like pulling on each other's dicks oh, and like pissing tugging, on each other. Tugging, yeah, because yeah. chugging on dicks is <laughs> far different else. than tugging on that's dicks. That's something else. <laughs> yeah, that's um, something else. And that sounds like a rugby thing. It was. Yeah. There was a footy thing and then they were all like. I hate boys. I still, I still to this day, I like girls. I like hanging out with girls. I don't, you know, I far, I also far prefer the company of women. Yeah, I don't um, want it. I don't need to. Yeah, I've never seen a bunch of women. I guess some women slap clits. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. Right, they got to get a little clit chuck. Yeah, clit tap. Yeah, I don't know. If, uh, I don't know. Uh, do they do clit check? 
Tide Stories LP on gmail.com. We're asking a lot of questions I here. I know. But, I guess know. it's good to kick uh, but it I'm, to the but audience. But I, I like being on Side Stories now because all of my curious queries can be answered. I don't ever have to look anything up. <laughs> and then I just believe whatever you guys say. It's yeah. kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that our poll samples are skewed. Um, but Yeah. It, towards still, our favor. Yeah. Towards our favor. And towards our favorites. Mm, you. Our favorites. Right from your grave. Do we got time for another story? All right, let me go. This is a great story. Now, this story here is, we'll cover this. This is, fuck. You got to be careful, man. You really do. You got to keep your head in the goddamn swivel when you're out there dating. Okay? Because you never really know anybody. Accused cyclist, killer, had escaped plans for months. Now, this was a person, this is, uh, this. you could just see, you could see it's how her eyes are shaped. Like mm-hmm. one slightly above the other. She's got Ted Bundy eyes. Shannon Doherty eyes. Yes. Um, now, this was Caitlin Marie Armstrong has allegedly been concocting a scheme about trying to figure out how to train to escape police custody because they are uh, accused of the murder of a pro cyclist. You know what look she has? Manson girl. Oh, very like, close. She, she gives real heavy Manson girl Just vibes. Just like, do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Always and always forever. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're always like, for all is one. Ma'am, please. Um, so Armstrong, 35, she is charged with first degree murder and the killing of competitive cyclist Anna Mariah Wilson, who's 25 years old. Now, apparently, um, Anna Mariah Wilson, the victim, went on a date with Caitlin Marie Armstrong, the killer's boyfriend, quote unquote, a date. Right. It sounds like, and the boyfriend was in, by the name of Colin Strickland, who was also a professional cyclist. And it sounds like we don't know that it was either something friendly that misconstrued, or maybe he was caught on the beginning of cheating. Maybe. But who fucking knows? No one deserves to die for it. Nope. Um, because it just shows you, that, yeah, yeah, you can throw that man to curb. You keep that man in the curb, girl. You keep that man in the curb. All right, so you just move on. You move on. Um, so you pray love. They went. Apparently, the this this uh, Wilson and Strickland had went on a swimming. They went swimming together, and they got, again until maybe seeing each other in a bathing suits, not super friendly, but I don't know. Yeah, you know. And then they had dinner together, and then that night, uh, I guess somehow she found out. Uh, the the poor lady Anna Mariah Wilson was shot dead. Later that night, presumably, allegedly by Caitlin Marie Armstrong. Now, the thing is, of course, allegedly, but the next day she used a bogus passport to fly to Costa Rica. Mm. Not super innocent sounding, (laughs) you know what I mean? And then she spent 43 days on the lam before being captured at a backpacker's lodge in the popular beach town of St. Teresa. It sounds lovely. They said they actually had found she had just purchased about $6,350 worth of cosmetic surgery that she was just about to go get. Yeah. Um, But the, the next part is where it gets interesting, is that, so they pick her up, right? And so they go to transport her to, I guess she had a medical to visit they wanted to do. Well, first they brought her from uh, Costa Rica. They brought her back to Austin. And apparently, up to this point, what the police officers did not know was that she was actively training on how to get away from police officers. Yeah. So she's running sprints, doing yoga, lifting weights, doing squats with weights, doing all that, practicing jumping. She then went and staged what looked like a leg injury to, so that she can then have medical reason to not have leg restraints put on her, right? So she did that. She set this all up. They said now that there was no history of the injury, that we had no idea if you even had an injury, but she set it up. And then they also found within her cell phone case a handcuff picking, like, little piece of material, like Incredible. a tool. Like, And this lady almost, I guess, almost did it. Well, I mean, the, the attempted escape, she got away for 10 minutes. Like a 10 minute run is like, that's a lot because most escape attempts from jail, like it, they get about six feet before some, they just get taken down. Training. Yeah. I you mean, just it, dig in. It's all about, he see that, hear that pistol go off. You gotta be able to, it's, you know, I can't, was it spring motion? Yeah. Being and I'm, able to just put. Yeah. And I'm watching the footage. There's a little bit of, there's about 10 seconds of footage of her running. And I got to oh, see this, flip and, this to me. And I got to say, Good form. Let me see this. I'm going to see this footage right here because I actually, I haven't seen this because I don't know if she can beat me. Do you think she's fast as me? She's not faster than me. 
You fucking kidding me? I'm the fastest man within 10 feet. Within 10 feet, yeah. If you can get, for, if if you're trying to escape from prison and you're like 10 feet from an airplane like door that's about to like close. Yeah, like this is the expendables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Yeah. But, whoa, yeah, she's, jo- oh, yeah, she's digging. Yeah. Whoa, those are long strides. Yeah, that's what I say. Like good form. Like this woman is getting away. And what she did was that she had set herself up. She had, she complained of being cold. She wore a set of thermals underneath her cl- her uniform. They had put her in a prison uniform, and she somehow got out, took off the fucking prison uniform, so she looked like she was just dressed in normal ass clothes, and then just boom! I think see, like she well, tries to jump the fence. That's the issue here. She tries to jump the fence. She well, got caught dressed in normal clothes, except for her bottoms, which are like I didn't know Texas was still doing like Beagle Boys, like yeah. fucking black and white stripes, old school, like old school, like. Silent film, yeah, style. I think it's there. It's their thing. There is to embarrass you. Oh yeah, Texas really loves to embarrass you for committing a crime. They well, really like to humiliate you. It's uh, yeah, Texas is really big. Like you know how some places like kind of give you shit and humiliate you, and it's kind of like in the spirit of fun. You're from Queens. You yeah. know how that goes. Well, New York is very, you know, obviously we're very candid. Yeah, with our opinions of you, but largely, extremely. If you send, spend any time in New York City, New York natives are very friendly. Actually, very nice and very mm-hmm. helpful. Yeah, if there was one word that I would use to describe Texas, it's cruel. It can be. Yeah, it can be very cruel. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, cruel and like and the humiliation uh, is very cruel. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So they, yeah, they definitely want to they want to beat you down and uh, they uh, laugh at you uh, as much as they possibly can. Can I just don't really understand? Because can we all just get along? Is that what you're at, at this point? That's you're asking if Texans can just get along all with ask, other Texans? I no, want this whole it's an world. entire state built upon conflict. I just wish I could go out there and ride a rainbow shaped horse. <laughs> I want the horse to be shaped like a rainbow. And I want to go out there and I want to bring peace to every child, every man, every woman in this great world of ours. Mm -hmm. And that's all I try to do here. I'm going to send you to a town called Throckmorton, Texas. And I want you to try to bring peace to Throckmorton. Guys, I think it's time for the first ever summer edition of Midsummer's Nice Dream. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. And I mean like, ah, yes, Sheriff, you, uh, yes, you spend all your day on the public stage, don't you? But now it's time to do it in the service of the great bard himself. Come on, from Woodson, from Guthrie, <laughs> from Knox City, from Rochester, oh. all come to see the bard's most curious and whimsical tale. <laughs> you're the local accused murderer, but now you're Puck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the man who runs the poison well, now you're the famed Tiberian. Oh, and who shall be wearing the donkey head tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can help with the power of theater. I think you can. So we'll, we'll set this up. We'll set this up, and you'll you'll go to the home of Bob Lilly, but a fucking Dallas Cowboys player who was a lineman in the seventies, uh, and you'll go there and you'll show them culture, oh, and, the, yes. and, and all of their ways will be turned around. And but one night. Of the theater. Ah, I see that you're used to the war upon the gridiron. But have you ever dealt with the true drama of pathos upon the stage? <gasps> so you're raping me. <laughs> Sir, please leave me alone. And so now we don't know what the hell is going to happen with this lady. Yeah. Uh, I think she's going to probably go to fucking prison for another second. Oh, yeah. uh, but her trial is scheduled for, uh, I guess it's like not too far from now. So uh, October 30th. Yep, so she'll get hers. Ooh, spooky. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Jenny died on a Tuesday. <laughs> That's all you guys, Jenny died on a Tuesday from AIDS. <laughs> Why didn't Forrest, okay, I know. We've, uh, we've gone through this again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> it was the shrimp. <laughs> I don't know what's in shrimp. <laughs> That's what saves me. <laughs> Now it's time for some Hero of the Week. Here we go. All right, we got two of these. One is traditional in terms of Hero of the Week. Uh, Bear breaks into Connecticut home, heads straight for the refrigerator, steals frozen lasagna. That's great. You know, it's just that simple. That's one. I just want to say this one because that's easy. Um, Bear went in there. It's somehow like, you know, like what we did with Andrew Cunanan, must have been familiar with the home. (laughs) Figured out where, it is hilarious because... It's very cute. He went straight to the freezer drawer. I really don't know how he did figure that out. He opened up the freezer drawer. They said they want, and he just, I guess he smelled something. He smelled and he it. just ate a bunch of frozen lasagnas that were in there. And, you know, God bless him. 
Because what else are you going to do? Yeah. How did he get into the house? Uh, I think that he was allowed in. You I think, think he, they was, lived, he talked he was, his way he in? He talked his <laughs> way <laughs> Honey, do we have an Orkin appointment tonight? <laughs> this Just... bear here says he works for Orkin. <laughs> yeah, he says he broke into the house. He broke in. Yeah. Oh, he, he yeah, broke yeah, in yeah, through yeah. a screen door. Yeah, and then yeah, he, yeah. oh, and then he crawls out the window. It's very, very cute. Yeah. Because that's where bears are more like dogs. Yeah. A big bear, a black bear, is more like a dog than anything else. Yeah. Like you can yell at it. And it'll walk away. Yeah, it's not like a grizzly bear or a polar okay, bear. Yeah, rip yeah. open your fucking guts. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, look at this here. Use the actual footage of it. Yeah, he just went right in. That is just, I, you know, I don't mind it. Oh, he's got a big bear butt. That's cute as hell. You oh. know, and then he barely did any damage. He really actually just wandered around the house. But then you got that bear smell. Yeah, he probably pissed and shit over a bunch of things. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you can see, I knew, I, could, I don't know. God, what, I don't know how they knew. But you know, uh, it, it's it's how it works. It's the mysteries of life. It is. Or, um, and here's the other real hero of the week, because I think this is fun. But again, you know, it is it's traditional of a celebrating of a fun criminal. Muncie woman steals car from dealership to drive to exotic dancer interview in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Police claim a Muncie woman didn't know what the big deal was. She was stealing a Kia from a car dealership in order to allow her to drive to Indianapolis for a job interview to be an exotic dancer. 20 years old. To be young again. Casia Shelton acted like this whole thing was a joke and did not understand what she was going to be arrested for. You could definitely tell the people who, like, are planning on cruising on their good looks for, like, the rest of their life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, again, and a lot of times it works and you just got to find the right town. Yeah. And guess what? It's not Muncie. <laughs> you ever been to Muncie? I don't want to go to Muncie. I've been to Muncie. Have you? Yeah. It, it what was, is it? The infamous road trip that me and Carolina took. Oh yeah, took. you're fucking when you did jo your Jonestown. Yeah, so, yeah. We yeah we eventually we started by going to pot. We are she's cute. Our original plan was to go to Muncie, Indiana, to visit the home of Garfield, Paws Inc., and then it turned into a Jonestown road trip. Yeah. Yeah. Muncie's uh, it's a town. Yeah, that it's has, a town. It's a town that has uh, and well. For, oh, I would say a lot of Illinois has an aura of. Um, it all feels like the background of the uh, the video to Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> I feel like it's a place that you got to grow up in. And if you don't grow up there, it's very uncomfortable and strange. It's got a strange feeling to it because that was also the place where we went, like we were driving around. We went to James Dean's uh, hometown, uh, his hometown. Well, this is Muncie, Indiana. James yeah, but it's very close to James Dean's hometown. It's very, very close. Well, I'm hitting here. What's special about Muncie? Yeah, I said Illinois. I meant Indiana. Yeah, now it's here. The, it says here, the Middleton Studies. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but we went to the, uh, we we're supposed to go to the James Dean Museum, and apparently this town has two James Dean Museums, uh, and one of the, there's the official James Dean Museum, and then there's the unofficial one, and we found out later, after going to the unofficial one, that the unofficial one is uh, run by a convicted pedophile, and uh, you mm -hmm. just don't go there. You're, you're not supposed <laughs> to go to that one. Mm, yeah. Now, Bob Ross apparently filmed... <laughs> <laughs> he filmed his Joy of Painting show, the TV station uh, WIPB in Muncie. Yeah. From 84 to 94. Mm -hmm. um, and then apparently Garfield, mm -hmm. uh, because Jim Davis graduated from Ball State University. Yeah. And you know, Jim Davis, uh, James Dean, and Jim Jones are all from the same, like, it's, they're all born and raised in like a 50 mile radius of each other. It makes sense. It's known for ball canning jars. <laughs> well known ball corpor corporation that produces glass jars and lids for home canning mm -hmm. began in Muncie. And apparently, uh, the guy, the uh, convicted pedophile that runs the James Dean Museum, children are told to stay away from him because he still uh, has that leering look. <laughs> That just shows, I mean, it's so crazy after all these years. <laughs> he still got it. That's what they're like. He's still, don't go anywhere near him. He still got it. <laughs> Fucking frightening. Also, I guess Close Encounters of the Third Kind was supposed to take place in Muncie. But obviously, you never filmed there. They filmed in Mobile, Alabama, and Wyoming. Yeah. So don't, don't bring any money there. Nope. Not to Muncie. And also, but there's a bunch of Garfield statues all around. They're very large. Yeah, they, Jim Davis has got he's got a hold on Indiana that we'll never understand. He really does. There's eight Garfield statues that you're that are in different towns uh, in Indiana that you're supposed to go and see. Oh, we only found the fisherman Garfield. 
uh, because at the other small towns, they were making Carolina and I very uncomfortable for existing and, and being there in their town. You here for Garfield? <laughs> Are you here for the dick sucking competition? <laughs> and which one are you the judge? All right, here we go. Let's look, get some listener emails. This is kind of a long one, but it's good. It's, it's, it's spooky. My partner bought her house in 2014 after the previous owners died. It was owned by a decorated war veteran named Paul and his wife, Nancy. Ooh, like Newman. He Paul served... Newman has a wife named Nancy? I forgot her name. No, she was a famous actress. Um, he served over 20 years of active duty, including two tours in Japan and Germany. According to his obituary, he's a 50-year-old member of the American Legion, the Masonic Lodge, as well as a bunch of other veteran groups here. Paul and Nancy settled down in this house when he retired from the military. While they lived in Germany, they had had two babies that died in infancy. Joanne Woodward. That's who it was. Yep. Not Paul. <laughs> um, at least one of whom Nancy allegedly killed. My partner's parents lived next door and did a lot, to quite, quite a lot to help them in their old age. And they say Nancy notoriously hated children. And when they passed, my partner bought the house and all its contents. It was literally like one of those houses you'd see in the show Hoarders. Each room was overflowing with different things that Nancy collected over the years, with a narrow pathway going from room to room. My partner removed or sold most of the contents, but several pieces of beautiful imported German furniture and other things were kept. And when I moved in two years ago, Nancy's dishes were still in the kitchen cabinets. Now for the spooky shit. Number one, Paul and Nancy's story hooked me. In the first couple months living there, I would go to the basement and poke around to see if I could find anything interesting. One day, I found what looked to be an old mud-spattered leather camera case. When I opened it up, I realized I was holding Paul's military-issued binoculars. And what I at first thought was mud was actually blood. Cool. And my first instinct was to immediately salt and burn the fucking thing, but it's such an interesting piece of history that we just stored it. Never do that. Because that's awesome. <laughs> don't burn it. No, don't burn it. Of course not. Like now. Yeah, just clean it. Yeah. That's either, yeah, that's that's World War II blood. Oh, yeah. My partner's six-year-old is terrified of our house and will consistently and randomly insist that the house is haunted and asks us to sell the house and move. She's been doing this this whole time that I've lived there. She complains that she hates her room because it's so scary. Despite us putting in a ton of effort to make it a fun, bright, colorful place. She's plagued with nightmares and is terrified of bedtime. She once told me that when she closes her eyes to sleep, she sees flashes of an arm holding a knife with blood dripping off of it. She can't sleep without a light on. She also insists that she sees and hears people in the house at night. She pointed to her closet curtains and told me that sometimes there was a man that stands in between them staring at her. Her closet is brightly lit with string lights, so it's hard to chalk it up to a shadow. Our dogs will be chilling is number three, and then suddenly both jump up, run to the other room, stare, bark, growl at the empty staircase leading to a second floor as if they can see an intruder. And four, one day I just left the house, and moments later my partner called to ask me if I had said anything to her on the way out the door, and I said no. She got freaked out and said that she heard a clear, feminine voice call out from the same staircase saying, see you later. She was alone in the house. See you later. See you later. <laughs> Tiptoe through the window. <laughs> I was watching Insidious the other night. T technically, it's just a novelty song. Why is it an evil song? I don't know why it's an evil song either. I love Ti Tiny Tim. People, I think Tiny Tim could be, obviously gives people a weird vibe. I guess so. And I don't know. I don't know if he ever shaked out to be anything bad, but who knows? No, not at all. I loved um, him. He died on stage. And it's a fucking dream. Tip five. <laughs> number five. The only thing that all three of us have witnessed happened in the room in which Nancy was bedridden in the years leading to her death. This room was the quote-unquote wind chime room, and she had hung wind chimes from every inch of the ceiling and the ceiling fan. On two separate occasions, we were there with the kiddo and saw the ceiling fan start spinning at a slow but consistent speed. I flipped the switch to see if it was a weird electrical glitch. To our shock, the fan stopped and started spinning much faster the other way. This has only happened when our kid was in the room with us. Are we being haunted by Paul and Nancy? We may never know. You're definitely being haunted by Paul and Nancy. Unless it's their choice to not get the wiring fixed <laughs> in their home. And then you're just haunted by their homeowners. Oh, the wind chime room. That's such a cool, because what I imagine with that is that she was so haunted by the murder of her own child, so haunted by the memory that she had to get hundreds upon hundreds of wind chimes. Everywhere. To make the memory go away. I just have to know if the baby's coming to abort me. <laughs> it's the baby coming to abort me. Um, wow, what a fucking, we're getting here. We're getting here, we're there, man. We're, 
close to spooky. It's the middle of the month. It's the middle, man. Have you been uh, up on your horror movies? What have you been watching? Well, I just got, I got those two. I've been kind of getting more and more back into watching horror movies. Last night I watched Trick or Treat. The other day, I mean, that Talk to Me movie's fucking awesome. Love Talk to Me. That watched was it, watched great. it last week. The first real, you know, obviously judgy. But it's the first real like Zoomer movie I've enjoyed. Well, because the the way I looked at it is that it's they it's just kids being kids, you know, yes. just like you know with seventies movies and eighties movies and nineties. Like anytime you get just kids being kids, like just like Scream is a great example. Great of example. Nineties kids being nineties kids, or yes. like the Friday the Thirteenth movies, seventies kids being seventies kids. Yes. And this felt like the very first one of those of just like Zoom, or like a It Follows with millennial kids, which is great. And then yeah. I, I do think that it's there. There, there I love the concept of using possession to get like high. <laughs> it's such a funny, not Super. funny, but it's a great, I was like, that's an original idea. It's You know like, what it reminded me of? It reminded me of like Smoke and Salvia. Yeah, it does. it's very similar, which is now I'm, just reminds me to never do that again. Never do it again. Uh, and before we do a little runoff here, just join us this Friday. We're going to be in San Diego. Uh, come now to the Balboa Theater, October 20th. All the shows are going to be there. We're going to have a lot of fucking fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm really excited uh, to see you guys in person. Uh, again, to dress spooky. I know we did. The reason why it's summer theme is because we came up, we booked a show in the summertime and didn't even think about when it was. No. So now it's like we're going to spook it up. So make sure you like, you know, Halloween costumes are encouraged. Um, and go to veeps.com, V E E P S dot com slash L P O T L to buy a live stream ticket. You can watch it live from the comfort of your own home. And I think it's going to be a nice. It's going to be a nice. It's going right. to be real great. Yeah, we just got our No Dugs in Space bit all worked out. It's going to be fucking awesome. We're going to be talking about one of the greatest feuds in the history of rock and roll. I can't wait. And you guys check it out. Live every day. Walking towards that spooky, spooky, spooky life, man. Live a, sp live a spooky life. Because, again, it's next to sexy. Yeah. You know? Because then you can love feeling like, you know, dressing in black. It's thinning. You know, like, go in there. Like, show people. Be like, oh, look, I'm cool. I'm mysterious. Don't you want to get to know me? Don't you want to ask me questions? And they don't need to know that you're fucking interminably boring. Right? You're like, they don't have to know until it's too late. Mm -hmm. right? Or fill a whole room with wind chimes. Dude, that's the way to do it. Because then you become spooky just that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you're just a sp spooky, almost unapproachable person. What do you think is really, <laughs> really important? And then you can laugh your way all the way to being dead in a chair and no one finding you for a couple of weeks. It's your choice. It's your choice. And that's the only way to live by your own goddamn hand. Goodbye. Hail, sweet Satan. Oh, no, game. Thank you for your gifts, sweet Satan. Happy Halloween. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. <laughs>